Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTAC Chemistry channel. So in this new lecture tutorial series, I'll go through this 14 to 16 years old uh, chemistry curriculum for the pure chemistry, pure science, uh, GCSE, IGCSE, all level or any other suitable 14 to 16 years old curriculum. This is a topic called any chemical energetics. It's to do with the transfer of energy as a result of chemical reactions. So there's this new term called exothermic and endothermic reactions. So the term thermic itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's to do with thermal. So thermal is to do with heat. So whatever to do with thermic or thermal is to do with heat. And then exo is basically outside, whereas endo is basically inside. It's just English terminology. But outside and inside has a different um, perspective because it depends on where you are and when you are doing a chemical reaction we also have to consider something called the system the system is basically uh, the chemical reaction itself so it's like inside and then the surrounding is outside so basically everything else outside the chemical reaction is the surrounding so when it's say exothermic so candidate should be able to state an exothermic reaction transfers thermal energy to the surroundings. So basically, when the system gives out heat energy to the surrounding, that is called exothermic. So this is exothermic. And why is it exothermic? Because the heat energy, the thermal energy, is being transferred from the reaction to the surrounding. So basically, we're looking at the system, which is the uh, reaction, which is the uh, reaction itself. So the system is the chemical reaction. Is basically what happened to the system, what happened to the reactants during the chemical reaction. Does it release energy to the surrounding? That means it's exothermic. And because surrounding is what we see, we cannot see the system because we cannot see the reacting particles. So those things are, you know, they are not they are they are not visible to our eyes, and therefore we cannot see it. But we can see the effect of this uh, system uh, undergoing chemical change. What happened to the surrounding? As the surrounding receive the thermal energy, the surrounding will get hotter, and that's why we get an increase in temperature of the surrounding. So that is that is specifically what it means by exothermic reaction. So it means that the system releases uh, thermal energy to the surrounding, and therefore the energy of the surrounding increases, and therefore the particles in the surrounding uh, gain more kinetic energy and therefore their temperature will increase. There is just a greater level of uh, understanding in terms of kinetic particle theory as stated in the year 9 states of matter topic. Similarly, uh, on the other hand, you have endothermic reactions. Instead of being released out, the system will absorb energy. So text in there is basically the same as absorb. So it absorbs the thermal energy from the surrounding. So the surrounding will lose the energy. And when the surrounding loses energy, it loses kinetic energy. And therefore, the particle travels slower, they move slower. And then we know that temperature is a measure of your average kinetic energy of the particle. As your particles travel slower, they move slower, they lose energy to the system. Because what you get then is the system will absorb energy from the surrounding. So basically, the surrounding loses the energy, they transfer the thermal energy to the system, the surrounding loses energy, the surrounding decrease in temperature as the particle loses its kinetic energy there. Okay, so all of this happens as a result of conservation of energy, and this transfer of thermal energy is called enthalpy change of the reaction. And then you gotta be able to state there is a sign, there's a sign, and then there is a value. This is pronounced as delta H. Delta means change, uh, is a Greek word for change. So delta H could be positive for endothermic reactions, would be negative for exothermic reactions. You gotta have a value and you gotta have a unit, which is typically kilojoule per mole, or you can write it as kilojoule mole minus one. Right? So it's positive for endothermic, it's negative for exothermic. A lot of students get confused about this, but we'll talk about this in greater detail uh, as this uh, lecture tutorial goes on. Okay. Last but not least, we've got to be able to define this new term, activation energy. The A is not on the same level as E, it's basically slightly uh, subscripted uh, relative to the capital E. This is called activation energy. It's a very important definition related to the rate of reaction topic that we will come across uh, 
uh, in a couple of weeks time. So it's the minimum energy the colliding particle must have. This colliding particle can also be referred to as reacting particle. If you do not collide, you do not get any reactions. If you don't react, you are not going to get any chemical change. Okay, so colliding particles refer to reacting particles, but just because you collide does not mean you will or you must react because you might not have enough energy. You must have this minimum amount of energy that you have to overcome uh, by these reacting particles before they can undergo a reaction. Let's get started with the main contents of these lecture tutorials. As I mentioned, uh, principle of energy conservation is very important. Um, we talked about this transfer of thermal energy previously, and it's a result of this principle of energy conservation that you have learned from lower secondary. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. They can only be converted from one form to another. Very, very important idea uh, that is very uh, essential for us to understand in terms of the energy transfer from the system to the surrounding, whereas here from the surrounding to the system there. And then we get a lot of these examples of energy conservation. You can read through this on your own as you pause the video. Uh, I really wouldn't want to go through all of them in greater detail, but there are things which you would have done in lower secondary, as well as things you would have done in physics, in pure physics as well, okay? We're more interested in chemical reactions, uh, bringing about uh, temperature changes, bringing about energy changes. Uh, therefore, uh, we can monitor it by looking at or by observing what happened to the surroundings. So these energy changes can be endothermic, as I mentioned, as stated in the syllabus. When it's endothermic, the delta H, meaning to say the enthalpy change, so that's pronounced as delta H. Essentially, what it means is enthalpy change, Enthalpy change for an endothermic reaction. Endothermic, endo means take in, therefore the system or the chemical reaction absorbs or it takes in the thermal or the heat energy from the surrounding. Whereas exothermic, the system releases thermal energy, releases heat energy to the surrounding. The surroundings get hotter. The enthalpy change of the chemical reaction, enthalpy change is for the chemical reaction, it's not for the surrounding, it's for the reaction, it's for the reaction itself, okay? Now, this enthalpy change of a reaction is defined as the heat change when the reaction takes place between the masses of the reagent. Not necessarily the masses, could also be, could also be um, uh, volumes of solutions because what we're doing a lot of the times in chemistry is to do with solution chemistry, something that is something dissolved in water. And basically everything comes down to this topic called stoichiometric equation, which is basically your balance equation, counting atoms, year nine chemistry, okay? Year nine chemistry and not a year 10 chemistry. That's why everything takes place stepwise. You're supposed to master all these things, balance your equation, very, very important when you want to consider enthalpy changes. So let's get started. What does an exothermic reaction mean? It means that the reactants uh, give out heat energy uh, to the products. As you could see here, the reactants have more energy than the products because the reactants loses energy. The reactants loses energy as you form the product. Where does it loses the energy to? It loses the energy to the surrounding because this is basically what you call an en energy profile diagram will come uh, across this specifically in a bit again so when you lose the energy to the surrounding the surroundings gain the energy but the reactant lose the energy this is called an energy profile diagram or well basically energy profile diagram shows you what happened to the energy of the reactant as the reaction progresses this reaction uh, progress of reactions or sometimes they call it a reaction coordinate basically what happened as the reaction progresses, okay? They all come uh, in various different disguises. They all mean the same thing. But what is important is you have energy on the y-axis. Your reactant have this much energy. Doesn't matter what energy it is. But as it forms the products, it's going to go through a hump, a hump meaning like a peak, and then it will be lower energy level than the reactants because the reactant loses energy to the surrounding. This is for an exothermic reaction because the system loses the energy to the surrounding, the reactant has lost the energy. Enthalpy change is one, one double-headed arrow, not two double-headed arrow, but one double-headed arrow from the start to the end. You can draw it there. 
or you can also draw it from here reactants going to the level of the products i could also label it delta h there there or there is the same thing but it must be one direction from the reactant to the product enthalpy change from the reactant to the product going down is going to be negative enthalpy change for exothermic reaction is negative activation energy activation energy is the minimum energy required um, if you look by the syllabus minimum energy required by the reacting particles before you can react the way to look at it is from the reactants to the top of the peak again one direction for the arrow double headed but one direction only going from the reactant to the top of the peak from the reactant to the top of the peak when we say reactant we are referring to the left hand side so reactants going to products this is called the forward reactions because it's going from left to right it's going from reactant to products so activation energy from the left to right reactant to products from the reactant to the top of the peak but there's this thing called backward reactions they'll become more important as we come across this next uh, topic called reversible changes where we can go backward as well backward basically mean product to reactants right to left the other way around so it's from products to the top of the peak there okay not to worry too much about this in the meantime uh, we don't want to worry too much about that in the meantime you don't have to cross it out i'm just crossing it out so that we don't worry too much about it in the meantime uh, but it will become important later on by default we are just referring to the forward reaction for the forward reactions from the reactor to the product from the left to the right this thing is negative because enthalpy change is going to be from the reactant to the products so the final minus the initial the final value is lower h2 minus h1 is going to be negative since h2 is a lower value than h1 there couple of reactions they are exothermic this is called combustion when you combust a substance enthalpy of combustion is always always exothermic so this is always going to be uh, releasing heat energy to the surrounding. It's always, always exothermic. There is another reaction which is exothermic actually. Uh, it's actually H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous giving you water. And this is your very classic neutralization. Again, it's a year nine chemistry neutralization between an acid, any acid and an alkali or any base that contain hydroxide ions these are the ionic equations again another year nine concept there when we come across endothermic reactions on the other hand so endothermic reaction basically absorb heat from the surrounding but again this is an energy profile diagram energy profile diagram basically you know profile your reaction profile your reactants therefore they've got nothing to do with the surrounding we know that you absorb heat from the surrounding so the system would have uh, absorbed the energy so the reactants absorb energy well the system is the chemical reactions so as the reactants form the product the reactants will absorb energy when the reactants absorb energy you could see the products have a higher energy than the reactant because the reactants have absorbed this much energy so from the reactant to the products this is the amount of energy you have absorbed this is your delta h it's going in one direction from the reactant to the product i could have drawn it from here from the reactant to the product and similarly i must label it delta h for the enthalpy change going upward is positive similarly we are talking about reactants going to products that is from left to the right hand side that is from left to right hand side this is by default called the forward reaction enthalpy change given by default is always for the forward reaction reactants to products the backward reaction only applicable when you have reversible changes another topic that will come across but be aware that you know for, for the backward reactions uh, your activation energy is from that product side because you start from here to here so from where you start to the top of the peak is the activation energy for the forward reactions by default that is basically what the question i was asked for is for the left to right hand side reactor to the product side so it's from the start to the top of the peak activation energy is the minimum energy that the reacting particle must have before the reaction can start before the reaction can happen well to go to the products you must overcome this hill that's why you must overcome this much barrier that's why you must overcome this much energy that your reacting particle must have in order for you to form the product when you're going from the other way of course your product is where you start so these are your colliding or reacting particle they must have this much energy from the start to the top of the peak
Anyway, there's activation energy definition as stated in the syllabus, as stated here in the notes. When we look at enthalpy change, we can see that the reactants that absorb energy from the surrounding because the final energy of the product is higher than the energy of the reactants. So the H2 minus H1, more positive than this, is going to give you a positive value. Your calculator cannot think. So you always, always must have a sign and you always must have a value and you always must have a unit. That kilojoule per mole can also be represented by this traditional format, which is kilojoule stroke mole. There's just kilojoule per mole there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there. Energy profile diagram basically chronicles what happens to the system, what happens to the reactants as it progresses to the reaction to form the products. Even though uh, we have absorbed heat from the surrounding, the surrounding have lost energy, but the system, which consists of the reacting particles, they have absorbed energy. That's why we increase in energy because this is energy profile diagram for the system. This is always for the system, never for the surrounding. In the next lecture tutorial, we will cover uh, what happened to the surrounding in terms of what we can monitor as well as what we can observe as a result of these uh, exothermic or endothermic reactions, what effect they have uh, on the surrounding. Okay, I'll leave it there for this lecture tutorials and don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more uh, useful lecture tutorials. Uh, follow me at ptet.chemistry, that's at ptet.chemistry across all the popular social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Telegram to get connected. I'll see you in the next lecture tutorial. Thank you for watching.